Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ben here, and today I'm doing a video about a topic that I don't think gets discussed very often because the topic itself is defined by not being discussed, and that is some of the most underrated players in the NBA today. So as we all know, there's tons of talented players in the NBA, and some get their uh, just credit you know, from being an all-star or being on an all-NBA team or all-defensive team or all-rookie team. But I feel like there's a ton of tremendously talented players that really fly under the radar, maybe because they're not the face of their franchise or because they're not very outspoken or another reason like that. Just because they just put in the work and don't talk very much, then people tend to not talk about them. But they can still be really highly talented and just not discussed because of one reason or another. Or maybe it's the team they play on and the team isn't in the spotlight very often or in a really small market so the team doesn't get much coverage and they subsequently don't get much coverage. So today I want to give not so much a shout out but just talk a little bit about each of five players that I've chosen that I think are some of the most underrated players in the league. And I'm going to have a, a few special parameters for the players I've chosen. I haven't chosen any all-stars or all NBA selections or all rookie selections or all defensive selections, mainly because I think that those players have gotten their credit because, you know, if you're selected an all-star, it's saying that you're one of the 30 best players in the league and I feel like people are recognizing that you're good and, and you're definitely not underrated because people are recognizing your talent. So you're not going to see anything like, oh, Damian Lillard on here. He's one of the buzzword most underrated players in the league that people often pick because he got snubbed about three times for an all-star selection. But this past season, he was first team all-NBA, and you know he was in the mix for MVP voting, and he was an all-star, so I don't really see him as underrated. And, you know, I'm not going to put someone on Al Horford on here as underrated because he's like a five-time All-Star. So I feel like he's repeatedly uh, um, appreciated as a really high-caliber player. Same with Klay Thompson. You know, once you're a four-time All-Star, you're not really underrated because everyone recognizes it. And there's sort of an interesting idea that if everyone on the mainstream media goes around saying, this player's really underrated, this player's really underrated, are they really? Because they're getting a ton of credit from those people saying that, so that doesn't really make them underrated. So I've chosen five players that I never hear mainstream media talk about, but who I think are really talented players and deserve to get a lot more credit than they do for their contributions to their teams. So starting off, the first guy I'm going to talk about is Nikola Vucevic, who came into the league in 2011. He was drafted by Philadelphia. Shortly after one season with them, he was traded to Orlando as part of the Dwight Howard trade, and since he's been doing really well, his best season there, he averaged 19 and 11, and that was in the 2014 to 15 season. And this past season, that his most recent one, he averaged 17 and 17 points and nine rebounds a game, along with one steal, one block, and three assists. He shot 48% from the field and 32% from three. And I like this guy a lot. I feel like he is rarely discussed in the NBA, but yet he's a consistent scorer. He can score down low on the block in the post. He can score from the elbow, and he can score from three-point range. He's really an all-around offensive weapon. I think the reason that he's not talked about as much is because of his limited defensive skill. He does get rebounds, but he really isn't a great defender, and that's why people don't talk about him. But I feel like on a team that's really good on defense, like... Um, for Just for example, the Celtics, you know how they plugged in Greg Monroe last year and he was basically seen as just only an offensive player and a rebounder. He's a similar thing to that where if he got on a team like the Celtics, I think he'd really shine and could provide a lot of valuable offense to them. But being on the Magic, them not being a great team, he kind of gets lost in the shuffle and a lot of times people don't even bring him up in a conversation because the team only wins 25 to 30 games. But I feel like his offensive game is just so underrated, and he's so good on that end of the floor. And he's you can basically pencil him in for 16 and 10 every night uh, throughout his career, which I think is really impressive. And I would definitely want on my team if I was trying to find a guy who could be maybe a third option. He would be, I think on a championship team, he could be about a third option. 
it sounds maybe it sounds a little too high up, but you know I think he's a equivalent talent to a guy like Clint Capella. You know, obviously d- in different ways. I think Clint Capella is a really good defender, and Vucevic is a really good offensive player. But I think just overall, he could probably contribute a similar amount to a team. So I think the reason he's underrated is more the team he's on rather than his talent level. All right, moving on from that. The next guy I have on this list is Evan Fournier, who is all, uh, who is coincidentally a teammate of Nikola Vucevic on the Orlando Magic. He came into the league in 2012 on Denver, and in 2014 he got traded to the Orlando Magic. And he, he's an interesting guy in that every year he's been in the league, he has increased his scoring average. This past season for Orlando, he averaged 18 points a game for, uh, with three rebounds and three three assists a game, and one steal a game. He shot 46% from the field and 38% from three, which are really good shooting averages. And honestly, a big part of his game that I think is the reason he's underrated is, well, not part of his game, but a big reason he's underrated is because he plays for the Magic and they haven't been very good as of late. Uh, You know, just when you're not on a good team, you often just get ignored, but Vucev, or, uh, excuse me, Fournier definitely shouldn't be ignored. He's a very talented player, very good on offense, a little bit to be desired on defense. Not a bad defender, just pretty average to slightly below average, but not like a terrible defender. Um, but he really is a great contributor on offense, and I think his three-point touch is really why he's valuable. I think on a really good team, he could play a role uh, I'm trying to think of who he'd be like on a really good team, but I don't know. It's hard to come up with him on the spot. But if you think about it, every team in the NBA needs a really good shooter. I feel like if you think – here's I got that example now. On the 2015 Hawks when they won 60 games, I think he would essentially play the same role as Kyle Korver, except he has a little bit more of an offensive repertoire. But he'd basically just be a three-point shooter and could put in about 13 or 14 points a game on a really good team and be about the fourth-best player on a really good team, much like Korver was. Uh, So, yeah, I really like Fournier a lot. I think he's basically Kyle Korver, except with a dribble drive move and the ability to score off the dribble, which I think is very valuable. So on on a contender, he could be a great contributor, and he'd be like one of those glue guys on a championship team, I think. Maybe like Danny Green on the 2014 Spurs, where he contributed a lot, but just no no one really talks about him all that much because he just does his role and does it really well, but isn't flashy with it exactly. So yeah, the second guy on this list is Evan Fournier. Now the third guy I'm very fond of, and he is actually on a good team, but for some reason he just doesn't get talked about all that much, and that would be Gary Harris of the Denver Nuggets. He came into the league in 2014, and I think maybe a reason he didn't get talked about much is that in his rookie year, he was, um, no offense to him, but he was really bad. He shot 30% from the field, 20% from three, and averaged three points a game in 13 minutes a night, which if you adjust that to playing 36 minutes is around nine points a night, which is not that good. But since then, he's really improved. His scoring average has improved every year. He's finally gotten a chance to start. That was in 2015. He finally got a chance to start. Um, And as of this last season, he's averaging 18 points a game, three rebounds, three assists, two steals a game. He shot 49% from the field this last year and 40% from three, which is really good. Uh, Yeah, he's just like a great offensive weapon. I'd say he's better than Fournier. He has more bounce off the dribble. He has more athleticism. He's a really good shooter, uh, but in a similar mold to Fournier in that he's really good at shooting. That's probably his most valuable asset as an offensive player. Again, not a great defender. He's improving on defense, but not great. Uh, I think you'd say right now he's about an average player, so right in the middle. Um, But he's definitely improving on that side of the floor. He's a little bit undersized for his position. He's only 6'4 at shooting guard, which is a slight disadvantage, but he makes it work just fine. And I think if he can just keep improving his defense and if he can get a little bit better off the dribble, he's pretty decent right now, but if he can just improve that a little bit more, he'll be an all-around offensive weapon and he can be scoring more like 22 points a game up from 18. 
but he's re you know I really like him on Denver. I really like their future a lot. Uh, I think the main reason he's probably underrated is because it's a smaller market for basketball. They didn't make the playoffs last year, and really they just have a ton of offensive weapons. And when you have that, each individual guy is going to naturally get a little bit less attention than they do otherwise on a team with less offensive firepower. So yeah, that's a little bit about Gary Harris. The next guy I have on here is TJ Warren. This guy's really interesting. You know, when he was in college, he was touted as like a blue chip top prospect. But then when he got to the league or in the draft, his stock fell a lot. And I don't really know why, but it, it just happened somehow because of various concerns about him. But I like him a lot too. He's on the Phoenix Suns. And I think the main reason he doesn't get talked about is because they're just so dang bad. And yeah, that's really the main reason because he himself is a very talented player. His scoring averages have gone up every season. In this last season, he averaged 20 points a game, 5 rebounds, uh, 1 steal a game, 1 block a game. He shot 50% from the field. But actually his 3-point percentage was pretty bad compared to what it has been before. His career average is 28% from three, and this last year he shot 22% from three, so that's well below what it should be. Ideally, he'd be around 30%, but uh, he just needs to develop that three-point shot. If he develops that, he actually may get a lot more credit uh, around the NBA, and he'd be much more of an offensive threat because right now he's basically just a slasher. Sort of, you'd say, like a poor man's Andrew Wiggins, maybe. Uh, in that he really doesn't do much besides score, and he really doesn't have much of a jumper, so he just has to always drive to the bucket to score. But if he could get more of an outside shot, he'd be a much more potent offensive threat. His defense is okay, not great. Um, but yeah, I'd say, again, the main reason he's underrated is because he's on the Phoenix Suns and how bad they are. But, you know, if this next year, I could see them improving a lot with Aiton. And I really like the core of Aiton, Devin Booker, TJ Warren, and Trevor Ariza sort of as the mentor figure. You know, I could see them winning 37 games this year. Um, just with Aiton, I think he'll improve them a lot. And I think TJ Warren's going to continue to improve his game as well. And I don't think it's an anomaly that he scored 20 points a game this year. I think that he has lots of bright things coming for him in the future. And yeah, I I just can't say enough good things about him. Besides, the only thing I have against him is that he's not a good three-point shooter right now. If he can improve that, I think he'll be a next-level player and could be a, a fringe all-star, honestly. All right, and my last player is Chris Middleton of the Milwaukee Bucks. And I, this is a guy, I'm not really sure why he's underrated or why people don't talk about him ever. He's a very good defender, and he's a very good offensive player, and he's on a playoff team. I think the main reason is because he is in a small basketball market in Milwaukee, and also because he plays on a team with a superstar in Giannis, and often on a, a playoff team with one superstar. The media only wants to cover that one superstar. But I think that Chris Middleton is a great player, and I think he deserves any and all credit that comes his way. Uh, originally playing for Detroit, came into the league in 2012, was then traded to Milwaukee for Tobias Harris uh, the next season. His scoring average has increased every year, except he was injured in the 16 to 17 season, so his scoring average went down. But if you omit that because he was injured a lot of the year, then his scoring average has gone up every season he's played in the NBA. He's coming off a season in which he averaged 20 points a game, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals a game, 47% shooting from the field, and 36% from 3. Uh, his 3-point percentage was a little bit down last year, but historically he's been a really good shooter, around 40% for his career. Uh, his only The only critique I have of his offensive game is he doesn't have much of a dribble penetration game. If he could... I know the NBA is really moving away from ISO basketball, but I feel like a really good offensive player should be able to penetrate and just create their own offense a little bit if push comes to shove and the team just needs a basket in a critical situation. So I feel like him being able to develop a dribble penetration, cre uh, create your own shot 
uh, offensive repertoire to his game could really improve his, his overall abilities a lot. And his value might even go up a lot, you know. If he increases his average to 24 points a game, I think that people will actually start talking about him a lot more. And actually, I think that now that LeBron has moved to the West, he might get a lot more credit too because I could see Milwaukee being a, a top four seed in the East. And if that's so, they're going to get a lot more coverage. And people kind of already know all about Giannis. So the other guys like him and Brogdon and uh, Eric Bledsoe are going to get a lot more coverage. But seeing as Middleton is the second best player on the team, I think he would be the main player getting the coverage. So all right, guys, those are five players that I find to be very underrated in the NBA today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And actually, another distinction I want to make is that I also didn't include players on here who got super big contracts. So, for instance, I didn't put Mike Conley on this list because he's making $30 million a year. And I know that he is one of the most underrated players and that he's never made an all-star game and he's really talented. But I think people understand his value if he makes $30 million a year. Like People understand how good he is because he's getting that huge contract. Or a guy like Wes Matthews, he got a really big contract when he went to Dallas. Or Harrison Barnes when he went to Dallas got a big contract, about $20 million a year. So that being said, I don't find those guys to be underrated because... People have seen their value on the market and paid them accordingly. So obviously their value is understood. Um, yeah, so that, that being said, that's why I didn't include some of those players. I tried to include guys who haven't gotten recognition as far as all-star ballots or other formal recognition. And also haven't gotten recognition on the open market as far as free agency deals. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. I'd be glad to hear what you guys think, and I'll see you with a, another video coming soon. Alright guys, bye.